What's happening everyone, my name is Alex and welcome back! In today's video we are checking out one of the latest phones using the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. So the phone that we have here today is called the IQ12. IQ is basically a sub-brand of Vivo, so basically this is a Vivo phone. And what better way to learn more about this device than comparing it to something super popular like the Samsung Galaxy S23. Alright, so out of the two devices the IQ12 is the cheaper device, so keep that in mind even though this is more powerful because we have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, where in the Samsung Galaxy S23 we have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. This one is the cheaper device. Alright, so we are going to be starting by checking out what comes in the boxes with both devices. I've also included a small camera comparison later on in the video and if you want to check that out it starts at this minute of the video. So let's take a look and see what we get in the boxes for both these devices. Alright, so here we have a massive difference to what we are going to find in the boxes. So in the box of the Samsung Galaxy S23 we just get the cable and that's pretty much it, where in the box of the IQ12 we are going to find a lot more. So first of all we have a clear case for the device and we also have a charger for the device. This is an 120 watt fast charger. Now the Samsung Galaxy S23 here supports 25 watt fast charging where of course with the IQ12 we get 120 watt fast charging. So if you want a phone that charges much much faster the IQ12 will charge much faster. Now the Samsung Galaxy S23 here supports wireless charging and reverse wireless charging where with the IQ12 we do not get wireless charging and of course we do not get um, reverse wireless charging. So it is nice that with the Samsung Galaxy S23 we do get um, wireless charging, but the IQ12 will charge much faster with that charger that we get in the box. As for the battery capacity with the IQ12 here we get a 5000mAh battery, where with the Samsung Galaxy S23 we get a 3900mAh battery. So maybe a better device for this comparison would have been the Samsung Galaxy S23 Plus. However, I do not have that device here, so we'll have to do with the S23. So you may be able to get slightly better battery life from the IQ12, depending how you use it of course. Ok, so what is the difference for performance between that Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3? Well, let me show you some benchmark scores that we got from these devices. So the IQ12 we get a massive 2.1 million score for the Antutu benchmark, while on the Samsung Galaxy S23 that's using the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 we get a 1.5 million score. Now the devices do get equally hot whenever you are running that test, so you will end up with the same thermal throttling if you play games for an extended period of time. Now if we go back here, let me just go back here and we go to storage. So my S23 here has 256 gigs of internal storage, where my IQ12 comes with 512 gigs of internal storage. Now here again we do get a higher score for the IQ12, so maybe slightly faster internal storage for that. And I might as well show you the score that we get on the Geekbench 6. So I did take some screenshots earlier today. So these are the scores that we get on the S23 and the IQ12. So a multi-core score of almost 7000 on the IQ12 with a multi-core score of about 5000 on the Samsung Galaxy S23. So yes, it seems that that Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is much faster than the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Now the way you are using these devices I don't actually believe that you are going to feel a difference. Games play really good, everything opens and closes really good, all the apps work just as fast. So from a user standpoint I don't think you are actually going to find a difference in performance um, because both devices are extremely powerful. Taking a quick look at both devices, well both devices do look and feel extremely premium, however I do prefer the way the IQ12 feels a bit more. So they both have metallic frames, on that side there we have the power button and um, the volume buttons. At the top there with the IQ12 you do get an infrared sensor, so if you want you could use this device as a remote control for your TV, just to give you an example. We just have um, a secondary microphone on the top of the S23 there. On the other side here we don't have anything and at the bottom we have um, 
the hole for the speaker, the USB-C charging port and the SIM card slot. So both devices do have dual speakers. So one speaker at the top there and one speaker at the bottom. And I guess next I'm gonna play a little recording just so you can see how the speakers from both devices sound like. So let me play that and I will be right back. So from what I've heard, the IQ12 here does get the better and louder speakers in my opinion. And I think I forgot to mention this, neither device can take an SD card. And of course, with the IQ12, you can install two SIM cards. With the S23, you can only use one SIM card at a time. So important to know that as well. Next, we are talking about the screens. With the IQ12, we get a 6.78 inches AMOLED screen that has a refresh rate of 120 hertz and a brightness of 1400 nits with a peak brightness of 3000 nits. With the Samsung Galaxy S23, we get a 6.1 inches dynamic AMOLED screen with a refresh rate of 120 hertz. The brightness for this screen is 1200 nits with a peak brightness of 1750. So yes, I'm gonna say that the IQ12 does get the better screen, not to mention that it gets much brighter whenever you're outside in direct sunlight. So you're gonna be able to see this screen better. Both devices do have flat screens, so very nice to use on both devices, but I kind of prefer the size of the IQ12. But as we discussed this earlier, the better phone for this comparison would have been the Samsung Galaxy S23 Plus. So out of the two devices, I do prefer the screen that we get um, on the IQ12. Both devices also have um, in-screen fingerprint scanners and they both seem to work um, equally fast. So really no difference um, for that. Next, we are moving on to the backs of both devices and we are talking about cameras as well. So first of all, the backs are made out of glass on both devices. They do feel just as good. The one on the IQ12 is glossy, the other one is more on the matte side, I'm gonna say. So for cameras, we have three cameras on the back of each device. We have the main camera, we have an ultra wide camera, and then we have a periscope telephoto lens on the back of the IQ12. Or on the back of the S23 here, we just have a regular um, three times telephoto lens. So if we look at the um, three times zoom pictures, there isn't that big of a difference. They almost look the same, I'm gonna say, well, almost. Some are better from the IQ12, some are better from the S23. But the biggest difference that you will notice is whenever you're doing 10 times zoom. Massive, massive difference here. So pretty much every single picture that I've done uh, with the IQ12 and 10 times zoom is way, way sharper and much better than the same picture that I took with the S23. So massive difference there. Next, we're moving on to some pictures that I took during the day with the main cameras. Now, for the main cameras, I guess just the colors are a bit different. The S23 is definitely using a bit more warmer tones, a bit more saturated colors. I do tend to prefer most pictures that I took with the IQ12. I find the pictures from the Samsung Galaxy S23 just slightly too warm for my um, taste. But definitely leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts about those daytime pictures taken with the main cameras. Now, another big difference that I've noticed is for nighttime pictures. So whenever you're using that main camera and the night mode on both devices, the IQ12 seems to do better in every single picture that I took whenever it was dark outside. So the pictures are brighter, they're also much sharper. So I'm gonna say that the IQ12 is the clear winner for um, still pictures. So whenever you're basically pointing the device and taking a picture with it, it seems that the IQ12 does do better than the Samsung Galaxy S23. 
Now, next we're gonna move on and check out some um, sample videos that I've done with both devices. So both devices can actually record in 8K with the rear cameras, but unfortunately the IQ12 can only do 1080p with the front-facing camera. I'm not sure why they've done that, but yeah, 1080p with the front camera, 4K or 8K with the rear camera. So let me play those sample recordings and I will be right back. All right, we have a quick video test between the Samsung Galaxy S23 and of course the IQ12. So we are using the main cameras on the back of the two devices and recording in 4K at 30 frames per second. Both devices can actually do 8K um, with those um, main cameras um, on the back. So we are walking slow. I'm also trying to keep the phones as steady as possible, but I'm also going to start running just so you can see how that video stabilization works. So let's do a bit of running. We'll stop somewhere around here. We are going to pan left slowly. And a bit up. And to the right. And we'll turn around. So this is our 4K at 30 frames per second recording from these two devices. What the main cameras would look like. All right, and next we're moving on to a super quick video done with the ultra wide cameras on the back of the two devices. Once again, I am recording in 4K at 30 frames per second with the S23 and of course the IQ12. We're gonna stop here for a bit. We're gonna pan right slowly. So the sun is uh, right ahead, basically. I'm gonna keep panning this way. I guess um, we're gonna be walking this way. So this is how recording done with the ultra wide cameras on the back of these two devices um, would look like. All right, and we also have a quick recording done with the front facing cameras on these two devices. Now, unfortunately, the maximum recording resolution for the front facing camera on the IQ12 is 1080p at 30 frames per second. I honestly don't know why they decided to do that. Of course, with the Samsung Galaxy S23, we can do 4K um, with that front facing camera. So yeah, this is how recording done with the front facing cameras on these two devices would look like. So what do you guys think about those sample videos? Do you prefer the ones from the Samsung Galaxy S23 or the videos that we got from the IQ12? I do feel that the video stabilization was slightly better from um, the Samsung Galaxy S23, but for um, video sharpness and so on, the IQ12 didn't do bad at all. But Overall, I think that the, the S23 still has the edge for video recordings. Now, both devices, of course, are also running um, Android 14, but they both have um, their different skins from um, the different manufacturer, of course. So we have Funtouch OS on the IQ12 and One UI on the Samsung Galaxy S23. And I guess it really depends what you are used to. Some people may prefer the One UI, some people may prefer um, the Funtouch um, OS, they are both really good, they both work really quick. So really I haven't noticed any disadvantages from either device. They are both extremely quick for anything that um, you're gonna do. And even though that um, the Samsung Galaxy S23 here is almost um, a year old, but the S24 is coming um, up um, very soon. So there you have it. This was a super quick look at the IQ12. I figured that comparing this phone with something very popular like the Samsung Galaxy S23, you're gonna get a better feel about what uh, this phone is about and what this phone can do. Definitely a very, very powerful device. If you're into gaming, if you're into video editing, this phone will be able to do it all. We also have a beautiful screen. I love the fact that um, it gets extremely bright. So whenever you're outdoors, no problem seeing the screen in any conditions, basically. So this phone does offer really, really good um, value in my opinion. All right, guys, um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.